studio by Brad Rogers and Krista. Uh, I'm going to butcher your last name. Foster. Foster. See, <laughs> I would have said that and it would have been wrong if I would have done it. So I just figured I'd ask you from Woodlawn Health. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. How are you? Mm. We're doing well. Good, good. Well, enjoying the snow. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It was uh, 70 yesterday. It was a conversation piece on the way here. Yes, yes. Yeah. We uh, uh, just had Brian Johnson from the Community Foundation in here, and we decided that there is now a fifth season, and we're just going to call it Indiana. Okay. <laughs> now, where does it fit in the string of seasons? Um, or is it interchangeable? It's interchangeable. So anytime you get, like, uh, what we had yesterday, where it felt like spring, and then today feels like winter again, that's Indiana. Yeah, it was beautiful. 66 degrees last yeah. night at 7.30. I mean, just... I yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was outside and just a t-shirt all day, and then today you got to have long sleeves on again. Well, I'm sure there were a bunch of children got up this morning and, and threw on shorts. Yeah. And tried to convince their parents to let them leave the house. Yeah, or open that door and went, never mind. That's exactly right. <laughs> absolutely. So, Indiana, the fifth season. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, we did have a, a board, board uh, meeting yesterday and so okay. can give you an update on that a little bit and then let you know what's going on here yeah um, from a financial perspective you know January was a rough month um, we were about five hundred and sixty eight thousand uh, dollars in the negative as far as operations now we had a lot of providers out um, so our surgery procedures were down 30 40 procedures um, it's amazing how you know a couple vacations a leave of absence just a small thing makes a huge impact on a, on a community hospital okay. so uh, net income overall though um, we did get that uh, knocked down to about two hundred forty four thousand dollar loss for the month okay. um, due to some of our other uh, incomes and revenue streams that we've got coming in that are not from operations so uh, February um, you know knock on wood cross your fingers everything's looking very good we've had a very busy month uh, numbers are moving back in the right direction and so we're, we're pretty uh, happy with that and the way things are going so um, we did add I think from a capital perspective we had one item yesterday we have a, a new refrigerator in the laboratory and I know that doesn't sound exciting to the general public <laughs> but it's very exciting to the laboratory staff oh, um, everything they do is involves chemicals stored at particular temperatures and and so having uh, you know updated equipment and things like that that makes a huge difference for them so um, we're, we're happy to get that taken care of um, some projects. I don't know if any of you have been to the emergency room or to the hospital in that area lately, but I think we talked a little bit last month that we've added in a triage room. Yeah. And so the nurse triage room is the room outside there of the uh, ER, and um, a nurse will be there to take care of you 24-7 to get you checked out, get some of that basic stuff in the system and started, and then really help determine, okay, is this really a true emergency? Or is this something that maybe could wait until tomorrow to see the primary care physician? For a couple reasons. One, to help the flow through the ER, to make sure those coming in with other things and that need taken care of don't get bogged down because there's too many patients um, and some of those maybe aren't true emergencies. Um, and trust me, I know as a parent, everything that happens is an emergency to you. Yes. I've been there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but this lets, that, lets them kind of streamline that process. It also lets them start some protocols. Um, nurses can click a button or two now uh, with the physician's approval that's already been uh, taken care of, and they can streamline the process and make sure that labs and, and images and, and those kinds of things already get going before you ever get a chance to see the doctor. So that way when the doctor rolls in, they already have information and you're not starting from scratch. So that's been in play now for about a month and, and going very, very well. Um, I'll admit that um, you know, last evening, I, one, one of my uh, boys uh, was being a boy, mm -hmm. and um, we got to spend a couple hours in our ER, and they did a fabulous job. Triage worked very well, and, and he left with two really pretty little staples in his head. Oof. Um, just, you know, just a little accident with the Frisbee. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it happens, and, and they did a great job. And, and from someone who's used the ER in the past without that triage process, um, Boy, that's, that was nice. Yeah. That was yeah. nice. Within a couple minutes, you're getting seen by a provider and moved to that next step. So um, that's up and running to take care of the community. And then the other thing we kind of hinted about last month um, is finally done, and that is our fluoroscopy upgrade. Okay. So we upgraded our fluoroscopy equipment, so things like swallow studies and, 
and anything that requires, and you know, fluoroscopy is really kind of like real-time 3D x-rays. So you are actually seeing what's happening and getting multiple x-rays layered up on, on top of each other so that you can see where, uh, you know, if they're doing an injection into a joint or um, if they're looking for a particular part of the body and how it's moving, they can actually see that with fluoroscopy. So that machine is up and running and, and they're working, working through all those new protocols and it looks really nice, very nice. Latest and greatest equipment, it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing. So that's been up and running and I think they did some of their first swallow studies um, yesterday. So awesome. very awesome. nice. Um, you know that in many businesses there's those outside entities that keep track of us. Yeah. And so ours are our accrediting bodies and we've got lots of different ones. Um, but I want to just announce that we've had um, a recertification for our stroke care um, and a recertification for our uh, rural health clinics. Um, since we moved the Fulton County Medical from downtown to over at the uh, hospital, those went fabulous in the last couple weeks. And so all of those uh, reaccreditations that came through and, and uh, hospitals doing a great job on that. So, yeah, yeah. And those are those outside quality entities yeah. that are making sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and the way we're supposed to be doing it to take care of the community. Yeah. Um, now, this one is going to be a topic that we'll probably talk about every month for the next, I don't know, let's say year and a half. Okay. Our electronic health record. Uh. Um, it is probably the single largest decision that we'll make in the next decade. Okay. And um, the hospital has really been methodical and done a great job of having different demonstrations from different companies and, and spending that time doing that. And, and we're at that point now where we've kind of narrowed it down to the one that we're hoping for. And um, hopefully next month we'll have a proposal for the board and they can review that proposal and kind of get that process started. That's a 12 month process at best if everything works out well. And our goal is that next May to July be up and running on a new EHR. So okay. when I say next, I mean 2025. Yeah, yeah. It takes that long. Yeah. So uh, um, that's a huge thing for us. But uh, the clinical staff, boy, they're looking forward to it. It'll be one seamless record that flows from outpatient to inpatient. Okay. Um, for patients, it'll be one record that they can get into uh, a, a an app and see all of their records in one spot. Not only all their records from here, but if they went to other facilities that use that same EHR, Let's say they had to go to Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. All those records pull in, okay. and they can get on and get all that info. So, uh, very excited for that process, and, and hopefully we'll have some great news next month after that board meeting. Um, and speaking of you know wonderful things for us, uh, we've been asked to uh, um, allow a visit from CMS. Now that's the Center for Medicare and Medicaid. Okay. That's the federal um, group that takes care of those patients and, and has that insurance for those patients. But they're also more of a regulatory body as well. Now, typically when people hear that CMS is coming, they're terrified. <laughs> We're not. We're happy. Because they're coming because of our OB department. They're coming because of our maternity department. They want to come, see what we've done. Um, you know, I don't remember if, if everybody uh, recalls this, but we want a four-star award from mm -hmm. the state and, and, and federally for our OB department here in the last uh, six months. Yeah. And they're wanting to come and talk to us about, hey, what are you guys doing? And, and, and what could we do at the national level to help? And it gives us a chance to maybe get that information out there to figure out what we can do to keep Woodlawn's OB department and maternity area moving forward. Um, in Indiana, in the last year alone, we've lost 25% of the OB departments in rural hospitals. Okay. So we are a dying breed, so to speak, yeah. if we want to make sure that we keep taking care of this community in that way. So this is a chance for our administrators, our directors, and the frontline nursing staff in those department, that department particularly, to have a chance to have the ear of someone who makes decisions at the federal level. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited for that to be coming up here in March. And we also get to help with um, creating policy for their other rural communities as well. So um, we get to have that voice. And so we're just so honored that they chose us to oh, have it's that. it's huge. It's huge for us. It's wonderful. 
Um, and that kind of leads into, you know, our OB Oasis idea, you know, making sure that everybody knows that, hey, you know, we're, we're up and running still and, and doing well. And um, we've got Dr. Ricketts, um, we've got Dr. Sanders, uh, we've got Dr. Amadi and Dr. Witt um, available for any of your OB needs. And so uh, let them know, give us a call and we'll get you and get you taken care of. Um, then a reminder that uh, Stephanie Waite, a new nurse practitioner, began working at Woodlawn in January. Just want to let everybody out there know that, you know, she's there, she's available and, and open for taking new patients. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that you'll probably see a lot of in the next six months to a year as well. We're really working hard on recruiting additional providers because the community is in what they call a health professional shortage area. Okay. Basically just means we're designated that we, we don't have enough primary care providers for the population. Oh, okay. So we want to really bring in more. So we're working really hard now on recruiting physicians and nurse practitioners to the community. Yeah. So, um, and then, you know, we've got to plan ahead too. Um, you know, right. in the next four or five years, we may have providers that decide to retire. Yeah. Um, and we want to make sure that we get ahead of that curve and not have to react to it. So, okay. Um, and then just a reminder, you know, Woodlawn, we do have a price match. So if you're out there looking to get something done, whether it's a CT, MRI, lab work, and you find that you can get it done at a different location for uh, a better price, call us, let us know. If we can get a copy of that from you, we can match that price. We wanna do whatever we can to keep the care here in this community. So uh, let us know. And then for any of you out there receiving phone calls um, that, that say Chartspan. Chartspan is a partner of Woodlawn Hospital. Chartspan is a chronic care management company and uh, we've partnered with them and they take care of um, the chronic care needs of Medicare patients and Medicare uh, replacement plan patients in the community that our doctors take care of. Okay. So what that really is, let's say that a, a person has a couple of chronic uh, medical issues. This is a registered nurse contacting the patient every month, checking on them to make sure how are your medicines going. Um, uh, when was the last time you got in and had your uh, A1C checked if you're diabetic? Um, you know, hey, it sounds like you're not feeling real well. Can I help you schedule an appointment with your provider? Uh, reminders for wellness things. You know, hey, it's time for your, uh, you know, mammogram, colonoscopy, um, blood work, those kinds of things. So I just wanted to let everybody know if you do get a call and someone says, this is uh, um, Brad from Chartspan, we're working with Woodlawn Hospital. This is true, this is real, this is us. Okay. Um, so this is a partnership we've got going. And so we're taking care of well over 350 people now through that program and, and see that it'll probably grow in the next year. Um, marketing side, what do you got Hi. going on? I know you're keeping me busy with all those providers. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> Um, so we love being in our community. <clears throat> we recently had the opportunity to partner with the Chamber last month for a red dress event and it went really well and we're happy to partner with them again. So we will be partnering with them on March 13th for a networking lunch. So if you want more information, check out the Fulton County Chamber um, and RSVP. It's free and we're sponsoring it and we're excited to be bringing our nurse practitioner Kyle Summers and she's going to talk about some work related health issues. So if you're an employer in the area, we highly, or a, you know, a team member, we highly, in HR, we highly encourage you to come out. Um, we love partnering with local organizations. It's great. We also, um, it's hard to believe it, but Kindergarten Roundup is happening. Yeah. I know, right? Um, yeah. So we are partnering with some of our local schools to be on site. Um, so if you see us, come and tap, chat with us. we got bubbles for the kids, um, but able to provide the, those um information for school physicals uh, in the state of indiana you have to have your kindergartner has to get a physical before they enter school so we want to help you with that if you're not at one of the schools that we are at um, please know that we are more than happy to take your kiddo on for a, a kindergarten physical um, we have lots of pay, uh, uh, providers accepting patients so just give us a call and we'll help direct you to who that is um, so I'm um, excited. I know, for example, Dr. Witt is a newer doctor of ours, and he's excited to be taking on some kiddos for, kin for kindergarten physicals. So, Absolutely. Um, that's some of the things that we have um, going on. And then don't check out our social media as well. Um, Mondays are always a popular day 
when we get to talk and share about our team, whether it's retirements and honoring those, but also honoring people who've just come to people who've been there 30, 40 years. So that's always a fun time for us. And I think that is everything on the marketing Yeah, side. I would just say on that standpoint, you know, one of the things that we do at Woodlawn is we track, you know, new employees and, and yeah. we track employees that have came back to us. And, and we're, we're really proud this morning at our leadership meeting, we were able to announce that um, in the last uh, 12 to 16 months, um, we've had nearly 40 Woodlawn employees return who have left in the last couple of years. And so that rehire rate is important to us because that lets us know, hey, look, we're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, people thought maybe that they'd try something different and, and they realized, you know, Woodlawn's a great place to work. So yeah. I would just recommend anybody, you know, get out there, look online, and if there's any open positions that you qualify for, give us a call. We'd love to talk with you and see if it's a good fit. Okay. Oh, on that, I forgot. We have a LinkedIn page. We recently... Correct. Oh, that's right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, revamped, we revamped our LinkedIn and we were non-existent. So if you're on LinkedIn, please come like us. Um, if you want to find out about jobs or things that are going on, that is a great place to do that. So um, it's where Woodlawn Health on LinkedIn. So um, come follow us. We need followers, so please. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're new to that area. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I, I did have one question for you uh, that you mentioned out of uh, the meeting from yesterday. Uh, you said uh, it looked like you were down about 30 to 40 uh, surgeries. Do you know roughly how many surgeries you guys do per month to kind of show what that looks like? So when I say surgeries, I'm going to include things like colonoscopies and EGDs, mm -hmm. so kind of procedures that happen in the surgical suite. Right. 140-ish. Okay. Um, and that varies, you know, by month to month. But truly, you can go by days of the month. Yeah. Um, but yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood, you know, uh, 90, roughly 90 or so procedures, um, which would be the colonoscopies and the, and the EGDs, and then, you know, 40 to 50 um, surgeries. Okay. So, you know, our goal, we want 165, 170, um, getting the, that number through. And so we're working on processes in the surgery department. Um, and there are months that we hit that, and mm -hmm. then there are months that we are just, you know, 30, 40 short, you know. Right. Uh, I, I can look forward at um, spring break time. I can look forward at the time right before school starts back. And, um, you know, that's just a time that all of us across the country take time off. And, you know, physicians and providers are no different. And so um, we'll see a drop during those times just because people are taking time off. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to come in and talk with us, and uh, we'll do this again next month. Sounds good. We'll be here. All right. Thanks, Krista. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you.